Hello everyone and welcome back to Retrobeat. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 US Gold games on the Commodore Amiga. Kicking us off in 10th place, we've got the 3D arcade adventure Cybercon 3. Cybercon 3 was released in 1991 and was developed by the assembly line. Cybercon's 3 layer is huge. The gameplay is polished and the world itself will be worth exploring even without the thrills. Once the suit is mastered, Cybercon becomes a cracking 3D extravaganza that takes Polygon adventures to new levels. Be warned though, this is a stunning game, but it starts out hard and gets even harder. In ninth, we've got The Manager. Now, The Manager was released in 1992 and was developed by Software 2000. I used to spend an incredible amount of time on football management games, and to this day, I still blame that for the reason I filled my GCSEs. The manager's big feature though, is the fact that you can have up to four players in the game at once. Admittedly, the level of interaction that you can have between them is fairly minimal, but it's usually limited to arranging loans of players or money. But the possibility of knocking your best friend out of the cup, that adds extra edge to the game. In 8th place we have Operation Stealth. Operation Stealth was published in 1990 by my favourite French developer, Delphine Software. Operation Stealth just oozes class. Delphine have tuned their system finally and the result is a truly excellent graphical adventure. The graphics are humorous but not to the expense of the game which grows in menace as the plot gets ever more ludicrous. With a single solution and one life per game, Operation Stealth is a steer of the first degree. It is definitely a worthy successor to Future Wars. And in seventh, we've got Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Now this was published in 1989 and was developed by the legendary Lucasfilm Games. This game always holds a special bit of nostalgia for me because it was the first film I ever went to see the pictures with my dad. Anyway, nostalgia aside, this is an absolutely class point and click adventure. The game and area is huge, there are puzzles to solve and of course there's a usual dose of LucasArts humour. On the whole, the puzzles are quite cunning. Some involve referring to the Grill Diary which displays a page appropriate to your current situation. And we've another point and click adventure in 6th which is Cruise for a Corpse. This was published in 1991 and developed by Delphine Software. Picture the scene if you will, your name is Raoul, you're a copper on a Mediterranean cruise until merde, there's a murder and only you can solve the crime. Even better, it's the 1920s. You must search a ship for clues, interview passengers and glean info wherever possible. Before you can say, monsieur, I point the finger at you. It's an engrossing affair, the graphics are stunning and some of the scenes are almost cinematic in quality. Now we get down to the nitty gritty, the top 5, and what better way to start it by the classic Another World. Published in 1991 and developed by Delphine Software, this game absolutely blew me away when it first came out. The intro being just like nothing I'd seen before. The game has beautiful graphics, it's the animation and stylized approach that do it. These are combined with wonderfully appropriate sound effects and some truly breathtaking set pieces. Despite obvious reference points to Mission Impossible, Prince of Persia, Cruise for Corpse, Another World is a one of a kind. However, I think we both know that doesn't last too long. In fourth, we've got Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. This was published in 1993 and developed by LucasArts. When is a film license not a film license? Well, when it's the name of a film that could have been made, but it wasn't. Then you just make up the plot specifically for a computer game. That is Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. The game works on a similar line to Monkey Island, although it's a little bit more linear and the puzzles have to be solved in order. But no matter, because there are actually three parts to follow, three different ways that you can complete this game, all with the same goal. All in all, a beautiful looking point and click adventure. Into the top three and we've got the classic flashback. Flashback was published in 1992 and was developed by Delphine Software. Without doubt, Flashback is one of the best looking Amiga games I've seen. The sprite animation is slick, the graphics cinematic, and the action swaps between shoot up, adventure, puzzle solving, and platform scampering, well, there's even seven levels of it. Get through that first jungle stage, and you're into the city. Guards patrolling the streets as you sneak around, tripping switches, shooting the swines, and trying to get enough cash together to get back home. 
this is a fine game. Just missing out on top spot in second place is Monkey Island 2 Le Chuck's Revenge. This was published in 1992 and was developed of course by LucasArts. This is one of the few games whose appeal has not diminished with age. Nothing since the Lucasfilm classic has quite matched its humour or its combination of action, puzzle and adventure and still looks incredibly slick. Taking the part of the quite splendidly named Guybrush Threepwood, you point and click your way through a vast gaming area, 11 discs worth. Attempting to solve a manner of puzzles, yet even when you think you've cracked it, a cunning plot twist usually sets you back on your heels, leaving you feeling baffled, bemused and bewildered. And yeah, you probably guessed it, number one is, of course, The Secret of Monkey Island. The Secret of Monkey Island was published in 1991 and again was developed by Lucasfilm Games. For me personally, there's hardly anything between these two games. It's just that little bit more nostalgia for the original game that made me have to put it top. You start the game on the island of Melly, and the aim of the adventure is to collect unusual objects which help you turn the weedy guybrush into a skilled pirate so he can crew a ship and sail off to Monkey Island. For me, this game is just a feast of animation with a wickedly funny streak. However, the puzzles might frustrate, but the laughs just can't help but reward. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at my top 10 US Gold games on the Commodore Amiga. I know I really enjoyed making this one. Some great memories. If you like Commodore Amiga or the Commodore 64 and top 10s, then please consider subscribing to my channel for future content. And until next time, goodbye.